And so at that point, is that um, the softest portion? Of that's the softest portion. You're gonna have the least gums and resins. And the reason, one of the main reasons why I don't make a tea from this is because sometimes the gums and resins in this more older bark, thicker bark, down towards the base bark, uh, burns the mouth. So if you're gonna stick and do a traditional tea aspect of it, it's the first uh, 10 inches well, you literally see the tip. I mean, I don't know if you can see it here, but in the springtime, you truly can see the new growth, mm -hmm. you know? And that's kind of what you would be, that's what you're allowed to make tea from and not have to worry about burning or irritating the inside of your mouth. <laughs> so when I, when I have a teal and I've chopped it up and I make a fresh plant extra, it's a beautiful color. Have it anybody made over teal bark tincture? It's like Emerald City. Yeah. Wizard of Oz green, Emerald City colored green. It's a pretty green. And it even is one without, of our great... Even without the leaves. Even without the leaves, yeah. I mean, theoretically, if you needed o oak teal bark tincture, you could collect it any time of the year and have a great medicine. It's best when the bark is alive. And the bark is alive is when you see leaves. And so the energy, there's a lot of energy in the bark right now, and the leaves are being made, and there's a lot of activity. Um, but I, I think I've made a teal bark extract so many different times during the year, and it didn't really matter. Um, but just from a, con from, from a conceptual aspect, we collect medicinal barks when, when the barks are kind of alive, depending on the plant, or when the barks have activity and they're not dormant. I mean, at least I do. Um, wild cherry bark, I collect differently. Wild cherry bark, I like to collect after the first frost. Um, when it's going dormant, and when the first frost is happening. But with desert barks, like the Ocotillo, I wait for the rains to come. Two weeks after the rains have happened, all the energy is coming up top. Plants are happening, making leaves. And this Ocotillo might make sets of leaves four times in a year depending on the rain maybe even more you know like make leaves and three and then there's a month of drought drops its leaves and then in september it rains a lot and the leaves come back so that's what we're seeing here because often by now the monsoons have tapered off and the rains have diminished and we don't and it's not an el nino year the Ocotillo usually, at least for us around here, doesn't have leaves at this time of year. But recent rains of a few weeks ago have encouraged it to do that. But one of our best lymphatic plants for helping to move the lymphatic, the lymphatic congestion and to help with better lymphatic drainage in the body, anywhere in the body, but with a special emphasis for the extremities, the lower extremities. Meaning we use Ocotillo um, to help with hemorrhoid problems, varicose veins, pelvic congestion, like a feeling of stuck bloatedness down in the, in the prostate or the uterus or in the male or female reproductive area. Are you telling him to bring you lots of bags? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> backpack. Oh, backpack. Anybody need have the urge to crinkle bags? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's not a bag joke. <laughs> you know, Seven Song now is only allows plastic bags. Really? Or, no. Cloth <laughs> 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 bag. Cloth bags would be it. Cloth bags would be the ticket. Old pillowcases. Just go thrift.